A few scenes from the Beverly Hill Cops pilot starring Brandon T. Jackson and Eddie Murphy has surfaced online. Back in 2013, both actors filmed the first episode of what they hoped would be a series. Unfortunately, CBS decided not to pick up the show. But after 10 years, it's finally seeing the light of day. In a previous exclusive interview with Comedy Hype, Brandon T. Jackson spoke on his experience acting opposite Eddie Murphy. Even though the network decided not to move forward with Beverly Hill Cop series, the franchise still proves to be a popular one. As Eddie Murphy is currently filming Beverly Hills Cops 4 for Netflix. Today, we have our Comedy Hub analyst, Yamani Sanders, Pierre, and special guest, Marcus Harvey, in studio. Let's take a look at this clip. I know I ground you a couple of times, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing here? Oh, I heard Dante Pierce got killed and you got caught in the middle of it. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah? You got any leads? One. I want to go talk to Alma Penzone right now. Oh, good. I'll come with you. I can do this on my own. I just want to go along and watch my son do some police work. Maybe get some pictures and send to that badass mother of yours. I'm sorry, who who are you all again? This, this is Marshawn Timmons. This is Jay-Z and Beyonce's party planner. Where have you been? I plan all day parties. That's what he do. The Marshawn Timmons. You know what I'm saying? 99 problems. You do not want to be Jay-Z's 100 problem, okay? So a, <laughs> an hilarious few seconds of those clips between Brandon T. Jackson and Eddie Murphy. Pierre, what were your thoughts about the clips? Did you say hilarious? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, mm, um, mm, sorry. Sorry. All right. Well, first of all, Beverly Hills Cop. Well, first of all, Eddie Murphy is a god to me as far as comedy and making movies. So, you know, he almost could not do no wrong to me, but he might have done wrong this time. Um, one thing about it, Beverly Hills Cop is actually one of my favorite movies Eddie Murphy done. Easily top three. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times people don't put it in the top three of their Eddie Murphy favorite movies. I don't know why, but I thought. Just his magnetism back then, it was 85, just his whole, his whole movement. And the movie just felt he was a, a young guy, cocky, talking stuff. To see him now in the same type of movie, but making him as a father, I don't feel the same thing. I don't feel it. I just wish maybe if he, if he didn't have the son, you know, Brandon T. Jackson is trying to take his place as far as the brash, cocky, funny kind of guy. And no one can do it like Eddie Murphy. No disrespect to Brandon. Brandon does a good job. But, you know, it's almost like, I didn't want that to be touched and to put him in the father role and doing some of the same shtick, trying to get into a place and, you know, a white woman trying to let you in and trying to host it. It feels like it's trying too hard. Well, I'm just being real to, to me, it's trying too hard. So um, if, if he had just done it himself, like, well, Beverly Hills Cop 4 is coming out. So let's see, you know, I'll, you know, he don't have a son in that, thank God. But I don't think the pot, that didn't, that didn't work for me. For me, it didn't work. And obviously for CBS, it didn't work either. So... <laughs> All right, Pierre, what about you, Yamanika? What were your thoughts about the clips? Um, I mean, I have to agree with everything that Pierre said. <laughs> Listen, I, oh. I think Brandon is very funny. Um, obviously, Eddie Murphy is a legend. I, these remakes are really starting to become a problem. And, it, you know, it's let Brandon uh, become the comedy star he needs to come become in his own uh vehicle right mm -hmm. not not trying to duplicate that's a lot of pressure too to have to mm -hmm. try to duplicate and 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 uh, excel to the to level of which eddie murphy did when he did it right. just, just get a new project start with something so that we can see him fresh and get an opinion from there mm. I agree. I mm. agree. what about in studio marcus harvey what are your thoughts uh I guess we are we are full house right now. Uh, keeping it real, man. <laughs> like it was. Eh. I think at that time too, CBS was doing like the remake for uh, Rush Hour, like a lot of like remakes for all that stuff. So they kind of seemed like they were writing the same type of like script. So there wasn't anything new about that project that would even get it greenlit in the first place. Um, I also think that like you know Eddie has been known for making remakes. You know all his like career, like even with. Nutty Professor, that kind of brought him back, you know what I'm saying? Playing all those multiple roles. These are the things that, like, just let Eddie Murphy be Eddie Murphy. But I don't know, man. The last few things he's been doing that coming to America, I love everybody who's in it. I love all my folks in it, but only saw it once, you know what I'm saying? And it's just been kind of like, mm -hmm. I just want to see Eddie get back to his, like, being Eddie in the old age of Eddie versus, like, trying to be, like, you know, regain some other stuff. Just I, I like to see Eddie, like, get back to being Eddie. 
So I want to take two things that Pierre said and then also Yamanika said and throw these questions to you. The first thing was Pierre when he said CBS made the right decision. So Yamanika, I want to ask you, um, do you think it was the right move for CBS not to move forward with the project? I don't listen. I don't know what these networks, <laughs> you know, when they pass on, they pass on some really great stuff. And then they sometimes they pick up trash. Who knows? I, I can't get into their head. It's all these executives who are worried about numbers and and, and less about whether something creatively makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the problem is I'll, I'll answer this by res, uh, responding to something that Marcus said about the remakes and, and, and what I mentioned about the remakes. Eddie, Eddie, uh, somebody coming in to play Eddie Murphy again when Eddie Murphy has sort of done it the best when he was in his prime and at the first time. And not to say that he has to be young to do it, but I'm just mean like when Eddie Murphy was on, everything was popping. And when he was doing remakes of Nutty Professor and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. something Terry Lewis was doing, he was giving us a black swing to it. He was giving us a different to watch him try to try to beat himself again. <laughs> it's so flawed. you know what I mean it's like who's gonna beat what you 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 gave us gold so um you know let's get something all I can say again is let's get something fresh I don't know but in terms of the CBS passing on it I have no idea why they pass on it and I and it probably these networks don't be passing on stuff because it's like uh, they're really looking at the content of what's coming out they pass for other reasons and that dialogue, to be honest with you, sounded like they had a lot of head white writers on it. You know, it was giving me a lot of that, you know, sort of, you know, different strokes, you know, Damn. what the black guy got to say. <laughs> Not that different strokes wasn't great, but you know what I mean? When You know, know. When white people writing for black people and it's sort of giving us this, you know, it was. Ice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Put your hands up, sucker. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He would say that, wouldn't you? You guys came out swinging today. Uh, so, Marcus, what are your thoughts? Do you think it was the right move for CBS to pass on this project? Uh, yeah, I mean, like like Yamanika said, there's so many different, you know, aspects to it. Like maybe Eddie's Eddie couldn't be committed to that project, you know, to keep the project going on. And like you said, uh, you can't beat Eddie being Eddie, and that's just some like really big shoes to fill in. You know, what I'm saying like for Brandon T. I mean, he already did something with, you know, Martin with uh, Big Mama's House. And kind of trying to like even getting out those type of shadows. It was just like, it just was, I think it was just timing for everything. And, and nowadays, you know, you just got to kind of like find your way. So. Mm, interesting. So something that Yamanika touched on, and I want to ask this question to Pierre. Do you think it's too late for Eddie Murphy to revive the Alex Foley character? All right. So one thing um, was mis misunderstood, and I'm going to correct it. I didn't say they made the right decision at CBS. Mm -hmm. I said I wouldn't have done it, and they obviously they didn't do the, didn't, didn't do it either. Doesn't mean it was a right decision, because they could have made the show, and it could have became a hit eventually. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I wouldn't have moved forward with it, and they decided not to do forward. That's on them. So not saying it's right mm -hmm. or wrong. I don't know what's right or wrong. Like Yamanique said, there's some great stuff they say no to, and I'm like, man, and then some terrible stuff they say yes to. So I don't really know if it was the right decision to, to not go forward with it. From that pilot, it didn't look, you know, it didn't look correct to me. Um, and I think that pilot was just Eddie Murphy just stepping in, get helping Brandon be who he is, and then he wasn't gonna be on that show. See, Eddie Murphy wasn't gonna do CBS TV every week. That wasn't gonna happen. So I think the pilot was not that he's gonna be around every week. He was gonna get, pass it off to him. Um, um, now to say it's too late for him to do the Alex, uh, 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 Alex, it's not uh, Alex, it's, um, what is it? It's not uh, Alex, Axel Alex. Foley. Axel Foley, thank you. She said uh -huh. Alex, I'm thinking, anyway, <laughs> Axel Foley character. Um, you know, Alex like, Foley. like everyone said before, you know, when you did it, when you hit that home run, perfect pitch, perfect hit, it's home run to step back out that plate again 20 years later, 30 years later, trying to do the same thing again, you step into your own big shoes. Mm -hmm. Hey, but Eddie Murphy is Eddie Murphy. And I'm going to say this, just like white other actors who are major get to have a chance to do doo-doo and shit don't work out. And back, I, Eddie Murphy has given us enough gold so he can give us some copper every once in a while and I'll deal with it. We can't be asking him to give you gold every single time. No one does gold. Even in the bedroom, you ain't gold every night, okay? Sometimes you come a little short, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm Nick, you're talking about the last dude you were. But no, but um, <laughs> no. so yeah, is it too late? You know, only time we tell, we'll see when we see it. When we see it, 
if he don't hit goal with it, if he don't hit a home run with it, then it might be it, it'd be too late. But if he does something in uh, Beverly Hills, Cal Four, they were like, damn, that's actually pretty good. It was really good. Then it wasn't. So we won't know until he does it. But I give him leniency. He's giving me way too much and giving us way too much stuff to, you know, to badger him if he does something that's not 100 percent what we want and say goes. That's my- he's like the he's, he's like the Belichick of like, you know, comedy like. You won all them championships. You can have 15 bad in a row and, and still get your job because you already goaded. Like, you know, it's the curse of the goat, man. Once you do something great, it's hard to kind of get that, you know, get that itch back. You know what I'm saying? I, I.e. LeBron James right now. Mm. You know, and they dogging him, and he's giving championship after championship. But, you know, if you don't do championship every year, they're like, boo, you whack, you falling off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, now, with that being said, I, I'm happy you guys are bringing this up. And thank you for the correction. We've seen mm-hmm. coming to America too. Marcus mentioned it. Do you <laughs> think <laughs> does Eddie Murphy need his return as a- Axel Foley to be a hit to overshadow his recent reputation of picking bad movies? Let me first start off with Yamanika. Um, I don't. I think. We're comparing Eddie Murphy to Eddie Murphy, which is a good thing about this conversation. It's like, Mm -hmm. we ain't comparing him to nobody else, which is already fantastic. I think anything that he would do that people might consider to even be uh, average is better than what's, you know, out there. I just, um, I know that Eddie Murphy has such range and he has such... uh, specific uh character development and all of all of the things that he does um i don't think anybody comes close to him other than you know martin as well i have to give him his props for what he does we just want to see creativity um that is going to knock us off our feet because we've expected it so at some point i guess it's a little uh, we're a little spoiled by it uh eddie murphy is able to do dramatic roles and characters. And um, it, to me, it just seems like sometimes when we reintroduce ourselves to a new generation or a younger world, uh, we don't allow our uh, legends to show us why they are legends without trying to bring them back to appease this new generation that has to get to know them. And it seemed like it was sort of like, yeah, let's kind of make him hip and 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 a criminal and a wild and something that these young kids can attach to. But there's still a, a large audience of people who grew up with him, who know him, and who are on in his age range and and um, uh, know the works that he does that don't don't need to see him prove that we need to like him. We just want to see him. Mm-hmm. All right, so Marcus, I want to ask you the same question. Do you think that Beverly Hill Cop, because it's coming out on Netflix, do you think this needs to be a home run in order to overshadow Eddie's recent reputation of picking bad movies? No, I mean, it's Eddie Murphy. Like I said, he can have 25 more as long as he still keeps working. He keeps trying. I'm willing to watch. You know what I'm saying? It's Eddie Murphy. Like most of the comedians who are out whole humor was based off of something that he said you know what i'm saying like so mm-hmm. it's like it's kind of we if anything in our culture like we should have respect for like the goats to even give them that opportunity like she said to like shoot them shots man like shoot them shots bro like we don't have so many we don't have so many goats that more so like with people passing away like i want to see him do as much as he wants to do if he wants to chill he can chill i love to see him on stand up i love to see him in some more movies i love to see him in some movies that he wants to do Whatever bro want to do, hey man, if he want me to be in the movie, I'm with it. I'm Eddie. I got you, baby. I got you. You know what I'm saying? And like even with like we said, we're coming to America too. You know, all those comedians in there was amazing. Everybody was funny. You just sometimes things just aren't aren't edited the way that they need to be edited. I don't know what it is, but everybody in there killed. They did their thing, and we just want to keep seeing Eddie do his thing. So shoot, shoot your shot, Eddie. Keep going, bro. So you just shot really good perspective from Yamanika and Marcus. PA, I gotta ask you, you right. know I have to ask you, do you think that this movie needs to be a home run in order to overshadow his current reputation of picking bad movies? It's overshadowing to who? To some old folk that's in the corner to my hey, he's funny no more. He's overshadowing who, who? You know what I'm saying? Overshadowing who? 
he don't have to impress anybody no more. His body of work has done it enough. You know what I'm saying? Every al- every song on Beyonce's album is not a hit. You know what I'm saying? But the, the body of her album is a hit. So every, you know, she has 22 songs. All 22 of them ain't going to be bangers. And I get it. No, he doesn't have to. He is he's such a multi I don't, I don't think we respect him enough in some of his dramatic stuff. But he did a movie called Mr. Church. Fabulous job. But it wasn't a comedy, so people don't give a damn about it. I thought he was great in Dolomite. He did a heck of a job in Dolomite. We want you to have $100 million movies, but who are we? Who is the we that wants? Well, I'm going to say they want it. It's always they want it. You know what I'm saying? So he don't have to prove nothing to anybody else, not to overshadow. It's, oh, if, it, if it tanks again, I'm not changing my opinion of Eddie Murphy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not one of these young kids that if it ain't the hottest thing today, it ain't worth nothing no more. That's why the Temptations and, and the Spinners and whoever, they still touring. But you can name a group from the 90s that you don't hear no more. You know what I'm saying? Because all of you, it, it's a longevity thing. These young groups out here, they ain't going to last as long. We can still hear old songs. These young cats who make the noise on social media and put their voice out there, they're the ones going to say, it ain't this, it's whacking all, all, all day long. It's just them. Like, like someone just said, I think Marcus said, the, the, or, or Yamanique said, you know, this younger gener- generation is just, it's just, they just want what they want right now. They want to be popping. And it's not, you know, you know, you got to respect your elders. But again, I'm not telling you have to like what he's doing, but mm-hmm. I want you to respect who he is. If it's a bomb, it's a bomb. You know what I'm saying? To you, to that person, if, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 4 is, it's okay. Because I mm-hmm. respect the artist as a totality. I don't needle everybody down to what, well, like the only good is your next movie or next show. No, I, I can appreciate how I felt back then when I was a young comic coming up and Eddie Murphy was all that for years and years. I'm t- I, I won't lose that for him if he makes 10 okay. more bombs. I won't lose it. So not with me. Now I don't know to other people. They may feel like, eh. And again, if they didn't grow up with him, then they ain't going to feel the same way. You know what I'm saying? I understand mm-hmm. that. These young kids, somebody under 30 didn't grow up with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, they're an old ass dude to them. You know what I'm saying? Old comic and shit. So, but mm-hmm. yeah. Pierre, you still going to Spinner's concerts? No, I said, I, 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 I just was asking. I don't know. I'm just saying. No, no, no problem with that. No problem. No problem with that. But, you know, <laughs> I know things that are happening in the streets. I feel you. I feel so you. I'm not like this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know Spinner's. I know, uh, you know, who else? The Yachtis. You know, the Yachtis. Yeah. Little Yachtis. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> You got some young things around you. I know they got you playing your, uh, on your Bluetooth in the car. I know they got it. But I will, but I will listen to the spinners. Oh, yeah, I listen to the spinners all day long. Oh, yes. gosh. <laughs> awesome points from everybody on the panel. And what a great way to take us into our break. We'll be right back at with Comedy Hype News right after this. What's up, y'all? It's your man, the Marcus Harvey. And we are here at Comedy Hype, man. Listen, Skit Guys premieres this Friday. We got Mike Bliss. Go check out the dopest interviews with the dopest skit creators, content makers, stand-up comedians, skit gods. Marcus Harvey, T. Sanders, Friday, Mike Bliss, all them things. Get it in. I did, okay, so during during COVID, I made, I did my own skits at the house. I was my own, I played 14 characters. Word. It was called Six Months Later on YouTube. It's Mike Bliss TV. What was it about, see? Six Months Later. What was it about, though? All right. Russ was like, Mike, I'm going to tell you something, bro. You got to get into the social media thing. And when Chase called me the second time, I had said, no, I won't go do the skits. I called him back. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I came. Welcome back to Comedy Hype News, where we are discussing Eddie Murphy's return as Axel Foley in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. And we have an in-studio question all the way in Atlanta. We have none other than Josh, a.k.a. City Slicker. He is a local Atlanta photographer. So Josh, you can go ahead and throw up your question. Could y'all think of any movie made in like the last 10 to 20 years that will probably be remade, rebooted, or have a sequel past this crime? Well, already they're making uh, The Color Purple. They just announced that. They're doing a remake of that. I'm, you know... (laughs) Mm-mm. Unless the movie wasn't good the first time, I don't know what the the remake is. Um, I, I I'm I'm more. I think people should be more invested in going back to see movies again, right? Um, in, instead of remaking the movie, it almost seems like we lack creativity 
when mm -hmm. we just keep making remakes. There is new ideas and concepts and situations that can be done. Uh, we, we uh, you know, did doing a star is born, a color purple, the, this bring coming to America back. It, it's And it's not really necessarily on the stars, let me say. Sometimes it is just on the laziness of our business um, because entertainment business is a business. We always sort of go down to the fiduciary aspects of everything. And it's like, oh, this made a billion dollars back in the 80s. Let's make a remake of it because we just need a billion dollars now in the 90s and the thousands. So it, it really is just a money grab. And that's really the biggest problem that we have with this industry is that we have a lot of people who make financial decisions who don't have the creativity and don't understand uh, artistry. And they're just making decisions based on dollars and cents. No, you're absolutely right, Yamanique. But unfortunately, in some uh, in some terms, there, a lot of money is made. Like we just had Top Gun, you know, with with uh, Tom Cruise remade, and they made a shitload of money. So people feel like, uh, let's do that again. I remember they did Return from Witch's Mountain, you know, with a rock in it one time. I was like, what? I grew up as a kid with that little movie and stuff. So um, they're just trying to throw it. Like you're right, they're throwing it against the wall. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. I'm sitting here in my little my, my little. Little, little small room. That's all I have. I don't have no kitchen or no bathroom. That's what y'all oh think. Oh my gosh! I'm, I'm waiting for Baps too. Can we get Baps too so I can eat? I need, I need to eat. You know what I'm saying? Can we get a maybe how to be a player too? Just just something so I can eat. So I'll be in it as an old ass nigga. I'll date a young girl that's 22 years old. And my old ass in Baps too. Or how to be a player? I don't give a damn. I need to eat. But back to what I said. Um, <laughs> um, it is what it is. Uh. They're going to keep making it, but you're absolutely right. We, we need better writers. We, we need more newer things, fresher things. Stop trying to rehash everything. But unfortunately, sometimes things make money, so they're going to keep rehashing. But I think we are, you know, better than that. Um, I don't even know. Color Purple, too. I mean, Color Purple, too. Is a, I mean, how can you make it better? I mean, what? I mean, that's, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, I ain't mad at the actors for grabbing that money, but how are you going to make it better? That's just, I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the way that the industry goes, they probably gonna make a precious too while you're playing, and and like I don't know how they gonna <laughs> white, white chicks. <laughs> Why, you know, they gonna do any of that because anything that works in America, they gonna go back and try to do it again and again and again and again. Uh, I don't know, baby's kids too. I'm gonna try to be in that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever we can get into, you know. I th I just think that that's what the nature of you know America is. It's just like, you know, like you said, we we are a very copycat type of a uh, society so if they see a, a dollar to be made they can make it well being from well being i lived in hollywood for so long well basically what it is is it's easy marketing if a movie was a hit the first time you don't have to market it as hard the second time because people already have a connection to it so a lot of less marketing you have to go in you have a feel a feel about a movie so people will come interested or they hope it's going to be better so that's why they make a lot of remakes you know what i'm saying they just feel like okay it's an easier push to make a remake of a, a, a movie that was a hit but I like what Yamanique said. If it's not a hit, make it better. Make make it better. You know, shit. If it wasn't a hit, you know, but you like the idea of the movie, <laughs> make it make remake that sucker and make it better. So we can say, whoo, at least it wasn't as bad as the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much to our panelists for answering that question. And Josh City Slicker, before you go, you can tell us something briefly about yourself. She leading it. I ain't briefly. have nothing prepared, but uh, <laughs> briefly, like <laughs> none, none exorbitant, nigga. Hurry your ass up! Hurry I'm, up, mama! I got things to do, nigga. <laughs> I'm <in> Atlanta. <laughs> I'm an Atlanta photographer. My tagline is "Where your teeth at?" and find a reason to smile today. That's it. All right. Cool. Oh, <laughs> that was Nice. That, that, was brief, that was briefly, man. That was briefly. That was real. <laughs> I mean, she put me on the clock. Don't nobody mess with no island women. I will cut you. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. So to close us out, I'm gonna ask our panel this final question. And while we're on the while we're on the lines, reboot and Eddie Murphy. So you guys, it is rumored that Eddie Murphy will star in a Pink Panther reboot. Now, that's an interesting one. Do you think that we need more sequels um, and remakes from Eddie Murphy in the future? Eddie Murphy can do what the hell he want to do. More, less, I don't give a damn. Just keep on doing Eddie because we're going to miss Eddie when Eddie, Eddie's gone. Remember that. 
When he can't make no more movies, we're going to be like, damn, no, Eddie Murphy. Prince don't make no more songs. Michael Jackson doesn't make no more songs. And when they were at the end, when they were clowning them, look at them goofy ass. He messed with those kids. He a wild dude. He went to make up. And then when they're gone, we're like, oh, oh, I wish he was still here. So while he's here, Eddie, keep making your movies, bro. Mm, yeah, so many also, thoughts? Uh, yeah, thank you, Danielle. I also think that um, Eddie Murphy is like, you, but, <laughs> of course we're going to watch him. It's sometimes that what's around him that's not catching up to where he is, you know? And so I think that's my, my biggest thing about some of the uh, the projects or the remakes. It's like, it once, once, it, whatever you're building around Eddie Murphy, it has to be at that level. It can't be, you know, st stalled or stale or not moving and not have the energy um, because then it's just like, we just sit there and wait for Eddie Murphy to say whatever he's going to say. And then you disappear with the rest of the, whatever's happening around him. So, you know, th that's also a, a part of legacy, but like, yeah, they, they're they going to do whatever they're going to do. He can make remakes all he wants. He can do whatever he wants to do. We're going to go see it because Eddie Murphy is in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I really, this whole, to take that to the side, this whole idea that everybody is doing remakes and, um, there's so much other stuff that could be done uh, is a, a little problematic to me. And once you make the thing, it's how can you how can you do color purple again? <laughs> how, you know how can you do you know coming to America again? How can these things that made us? gave us so much emotion like it was perfect go do something how could you do it again it's not fair to people that are trying to fill those shoes you know and not even just like with black movies like my, one of my favorite movies is space balls i, I want to see that again you how yes. can you do mel brooks again you can't and um <laughs> and I think a lot of these sometimes you know not I don't want to make it a young older generation thing but sometimes these young kids they like to slip into the things that's already done and then go, you know, and, you know, I can do that. And it's like, no, bro, just what do you do? You know, who are you so that we can fall in love with you the same way we fell in love with those things that we fell in love with then for its originality and creativity and heart. And, you know, I mean, I don't want, I'm gonna get on a, a soapbox, but, uh, and they already say I speak too much, but I'm just, really passionate about that because it's a missed opportunity to just be trying to fill somebody else's shoes. But you know, but you know, Hollywood is a business. And if these regular movies that come out, these new movies aren't making the money they want to make, they're going to reach back and find some other sure, movies. No, absolutely. So there's been a lot of movies that came out lately that we can probably, we couldn't even mention in the last two years. You're like, remember that movie? No, I ain't seen that movie. That movie, that movie wasn't good. I, so they, they go back and reach and say, look, we got to make some money. Let's find an older movie that you guys like and make a remake of it. It's a business. Yeah. But that yeah, goes back to like, I'm sorry, I want to say this because we've hit on this point a couple of times. I think this is a place to, to, to really hash it out. It is a business. And that's what I was saying in the beginning. Like, you know, when, pe when people say, oh, this corny, that corny, y'all ain't doing this, y'all ain't doing that. But then it's also, what do you guys go see? You know, it is it is hard sometimes. We're trying to be the creatives on this end, giving originality or giving different spins and concepts. And, and But when we have to go present the artistry and the art to the corporation side of this business, they don't care about heart. They want to know where you guys set the precedent of where you put your eyes and your money. And they make an analyst of that and they go and they study that and then it goes down to the numbers. So then we have creativity and art trying to fight numbers. And again, this is a business and it is about numbers more than it is about giving you something that's going to make you feel. Um, it, it, it doesn't boil down to that. It boils down mm -hmm. to numbers because at the end of the day, like, uh, you know, Pierre said, we need a BAPS too. I need precious too, also, so I can get. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need a couple of dollars. I was supposed to be in precious one, but my uh, you know, my kidneys and stuff was having a little situation. 
Um, they well, said, what, what were you gonna What were you gonna I, play? What were you gonna play? Precious one. Up. I was gonna play one of the chicken wings she ate as she ran down the street. Hell no! <laughs> but uh, that's because that's where my career was at the time. I can I can see that. I can see that. You know, oh God! You no. Know. So you you do you two are hilarious. I hope I'm using this word right in this in this context for both of you now. You two are hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> you. Now I want to close out with Marcus Harvey inside studio. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think that we need another reboot from Eddie Murphy? Uh, shoot, we want to see hits from Eddie. We want to see bunts, singles, doubles, whatever he wants to put out. Like he's a legendary figure. You know what I'm saying? We want to see. We just want to see him perform. And uh, like Yamanika said, you know, nowadays, I think even like, just going back to what you were saying, Yamanika, I think the, the uh, consumers even changed now. Back in the day, you didn't have any comments to put under Beverly Hills Cop 1, 2, 3, or 4. You know what I'm saying? So people weren't even gauging the reception off of the comments. You know, not, back in the day, you could just put art out, and it just was like perceived the way it was perceived. Now you put something out, somebody saying, oh, man, this is trash. And it might be somebody who lives in a basement basement of a basement of a basement, you know what I'm saying? And, and really trying to go at like your creativity and, and then like, I feel like it has stunted the growth of our whole community and creativity because people are worried about what somebody's gonna say nowadays versus just creating what's on your heart, on your mind, what you've seen in, in a actual, like uh, your lifetime. So yeah, but I mean, a lot, now, a lot of cats now are on Instagram, they're on YouTube and you know, that's doing skits and stuff. Thank you guys so much. Before we go, you know, I have to ask you, what do you have going on and how can people find you? Let me start with in studio, our guest, Mr. Marcus Harvey. What's going on, guys? Uh, well, I'm here to kind of premiere. We have a new show called Skit Guys, where we take all the dopest skit makers, creators, stand up comedians, sit down with them, talk about how they come up with they, they, their whole skits, their whole plans. Me and T Sanders, man, she is amazing. We kill it. Our first guest is Mike Bliss from the Country Wayne uh, series, man. We're about to really get into it, talking to all the dope people who've made Yo Phone a hilarious place to go to. So yeah, skit guys, baby, this Friday. <laughs> I love that. Yamanika, what do you have going on and how can people find you? Well, thank you, Dayo. It's so great to be here with you today. Um, you. you know, it's so lovely. Obviously, we miss our beautiful symphony, but you, da beautiful Danielle, they just, just beauty all around. And I have to, let me tone that down. I love giving my ladies the props, but then in the comments, they'll go, oh, she trying to hit on, because they think I'm a lesbian because I come here every week with a baseball <laughs> cap on. But I just appreciate beautiful, beautiful women, just like the young lady back there in the lime green behind Marcus. I see you, sis, looking good, okay? I love to give my sisters they props. I love seeing my beautiful sisters, but I do like dick. Um, <laughs> here. The hell, you saying you crazy? Uh, uh, so glad to be with my brothers. Uh, you know, Marcus, I, I I truly love you, Marcus. You're so dope, bro. Uh, such fam, man. I I love being around Marcus, and of course, old peanut head over there. Oh, Pierre, what can I do without my babies? Uh, you know, I, I'm at the Comedy Cellar this week. You can catch me on everything at Yamanika and uh, just uh, really glad to be here. And I just want to say I'm a huge, huge Eddie Murphy fan. So, you know, Eddie Murphy, whatever you do, I'm going to watch it, you know, uh, whatever, because uh, he was one of my first uh, comedy loves. So I have to say that uh, really touched my heart and a lot of the things that he did. I want to make sure. Did you mention how can people follow you? Yeah, at Yamanika. They know how okay, to follow me. These trolls <laughs> know where I'm at. <laughs> of course, last but definitely not least, we have Pierre. What do you have coming up and how can people follow you? Well, one day I'm coming up, I'm coming to the Bahamas. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to the Bahamas this week uh, to hang out. Um, you can follow me at Comic Pierre, C O M I C P I E R R E, uh, and I have uh, my, my girl uh, Catrice Austin on um, on my podcast, Pierre's Panic Room. 
she's the dentist to the stars. She puts veneers on celebrities. She talks about, she's really funny. Talk about who she worked on or whatever. Very funny episode. Um, also, if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, June 7th, it's a Wednesday at the Comedy Zone. I'm doing a one-man show, big show. I'm really excited about it. So if y'all in Charlotte, North Carolina, come on, show me some love. Um, the back, I'm gonna see what, uh, and oh, let me tell this. Thank you, Yamanique. Thank you, Marcus. You did a fantastic job, Danielle. I'm proud of you. You, you know, you know, you popped in a situation where you know it's not a normal thing you do, at least on our show. You did fantastic. Enjoyed it. Um, I really mean that. You did a good job. Definitely. Much respect for your words, Pierre. And also, yeah. thank you guys so much for your kind words towards me. Now you've heard from us. We want to hear from you. Do you think that it is too late for Eddie Murphy to return to his role as Axel Foley? <laughs> It's too late for Marcus to add his comment. <laughs> I'll just put it down in the comments. I'll put it down in the comments. I'm like, ah, 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 don't worry about it. Marcus was like, oh, I got something to say. Oh, no, man. Unless worry, it's, man. it's a wrap. <laughs> Danielle said, I'm out of here, and we all out of here. <laughs> Do you know the comedy culture? Play Comedy Hype, the game. Out now.